As tempting as it would be to turn a review about a light called a tiny monster into Pokemon Go clickbait, I'll try and resist. Uh, okay, maybe just it's a tactical Pokemon Go flashlight where you can hunt monsters at night, you know? And you're like, uh, you've never played Pokemon Go, have you? All right, the Nightcore Tiny Monster TM-03 is not a Pokemon Go character. It's a compact, high-lumen flashlight with tactical monster hunting tail cap operation of all of its modes. Would it be okay just to make a Pokemon Go clickbait thumbnail for the video? Because it's a tactical flashlight, it has Type 3 hard anodization. It's waterproof to IPX8 standards. It's got that toughened ultra clear mineral glass with an anti-reflective coating, an orange peel reflector. It uses an extremely bright Cree XHP70 cool white emitter. Oh, and it has that crenellated skull cracking bezel. The light comes in a box with a manual, a holster that's made out of nylon, a spare O-ring, and a special 18650 battery made just for this flashlight. Now the battery doesn't list the milliamp hour on the side, specifically, but I tested it twice on my charger at a charge, or actually discharge rate of 1000 uh, milliamps and 200 milliamps, and it tested it about 2850 milliamp hours. So I'm going to call it a 2800 milliamp hour battery. So what about these modes? My figures and night cores are on the screen. First is low, which I honestly wish was lower. Next is mid, which is a big jump from low as far as lumens go. Then is high. Then is turbo. Turbo's lumen output tested much higher with my device than Nightcore rated. Sorry, I just can only go by what it gives me. You'll see in the beam shot section later though that it is visibly brighter than the Ace Beam EC50 and the Olight R50. More than just the 300 that, you know, it's supposed to be. It's the brightest single battery, single emitter light I've tested yet. You get that catch? The turbo steps down quick though, as you'll see in my runtime section, which, you know what, I've decided to do now because I'm my own boss. The TMO3 only works with the included battery. If you want spares, you'll need to buy the battery made specifically for this light. I tested a few Hydrain 18650s briefly and could only get the two lower modes to work. Again, use it only with the included battery. Other ones will not work at all or will not work properly. First is turbo. Turbo steps down quick and steps down big. At 30 seconds in, of course, the light is at 3500 lumens. And at two minutes, it begins a step down to about four minutes and the light stabilizes at 725 lumens. Then it runs pretty steadily for a while and another big step down occurs at about an hour and 28 minutes. And the brightness tapers until a little over two hours. And somewhere late in the four hour era, it begins blinking crazily saying, hey, why didn't you charge me at an hour and a half when you should have? So your flashlight also talks to you, right? Then high. High runs steadily for about 25 minutes and then begins a big decline over the next hour and seems to level off at about an hour and 25 minutes in. Then runs about two hours and 54-ish minutes before the idiot blink kicks in. Hey man, it's time to charge me, bro. Hey, killed anyone yet today? Uh, I mean, not, not yet, Mr. Flashlight. Okay, cool, now the UI. You might remember a few weeks ago I reviewed the Claris XT11S. This flashlight and that flashlight are tactical tail cap operation lights. This light is bulkier due to the extra aluminum used to help it handle its much higher brightness. First, let's put the battery in. Now this is kind of something to pay attention to. The battery is proprietary. It looks like it has protection built into the top of the cell where, you know, normally it's built into the bottom of the cell. The top terminal has a positive tip and negative ring. Presumably this is how it implements its proprietary battery system. When you put it in, make sure not to bridge the two close areas on the top of the cell with the back of the battery tube or you'll see a spark. Okay, cool, now begin to tighten it down. The TMO3 is an IPX8 waterproof light, like I said earlier, but it has double O-rings at the rear of the battery tube to keep the water out, just in case. So you need to keep the tail cap straight as you apply a bit of force to get over those two O-rings, because they work against you. This light uses an electronic switch, so there's a parasitic drain when the light is off. Nightcore says the battery is good for up to one year in the light without turning it on. I recommend you either remove the battery or do a half turn of the tail cap to break electrical contact if you're carrying it in a bag or storing it for extended periods. It will keep the light from turning on by a button press. Okay, so the light has two main modes. 
like two main mode groups, two main ways it operates. They basically change how you access strobe or turbo depending on which one you want to go with. By default, the light is in mode one, which means the light operates the following way. Your power switch is the easy to feel in the dark rubber booted one. A full click turns it on. Half press is due momentary on, on whatever mode you were on last because the TMO3 has mode memory. So a full turn on and the mode switch changes modes. So you're on, you start changing modes, scrolling from low to turbo. Use quick solid presses of the lever switch. There's almost a non-existent, but it's still slightly there, delay between mode levels. It loops over after you get to turbo. Okay, since we're on suppressing light mode, or I called it mode one earlier, suppressing light is Nikkor's tactical way of saying turbo mode. You can do shortcuts to turbo and strobe in mode one, and that's kind of the main difference. For strobe, you do a double click from on or off. Now the double click can't be too fast or too slow. I found it to be just slightly slower than a computer mouse double click. From off you get strobe. Click it again to turn it off. While on, just double click it and it's on. To get back into regular modes after you release it, just do a single click of the mode switch. Strobe is saved into mode memory if you used it last while it was on and can be activated momentary from off with the rubber booted tail cap. Half press or full press goes, you know, full strobe. To access momentary turbo from on or off, just press and hold the mode switch whenever you release it. It goes back to whatever you were on before. If you want to stay in turbo, you're just going to have to access it via the mode rocker switch and not a shortcut. Shortcut only goes momentary on turbo. Now there's also mode 2, which basically flip-flops and makes the strobe mode the one you access via the long press, and turbo is a double click. Remember it was the other way around? To access this group, you'll need to remove the battery entirely, Put it back in and hold the mode switch down as you screw the tail cap. Just unscrewing a tail cap slightly doesn't work. You need to do this correctly. And you'll see two blinks for mode two as you make contact when you screw the tail cap in all the way as you're holding the mode switch. Now to go back to mode one, you know, the default, you just do the same thing. And whenever you screw it all the way down, you get one blink. So mode two will make strobe mode not saved into mode memory. You can only press and hold to access it. And then when you release it, it's gone from on or off. Um, yeah, turbo is a double click to access at any time and it stays on turbo, you know, for at least the two minutes. Again, the main difference between mode group one and two is how you access strobe and turbo. I hope I didn't make this more confusing than it is. It's really not. If you need long strobe sessions, go with mode operation one, so you don't have to hold it. If you only want momentary strobe, go with mode grouping two, the one I use because I don't like strobe. Okay, beam shots. Here are the lights that I'm comparing them to. A mixture of higher lumen and lower lumen lights. And ones with throw and, you know, some without. All lights are set to their maximum. First is a TM-03 at just over 20,000 candela. It isn't the throwiest light, and it's not the floodiest either. Flood is scattered light, of course, and throw is focused light, right? You knew that. This is a compromise flashlight between throw and flood, sort of, I guess. It's a cool white tint. Next is the R50 Seeker, which I reviewed just a few weeks ago. You're like, yeah, bro, I remember that one which is a slightly throwier, but not near as, you know, tactical as the TM-03. Tactical. Then back to the TM-03 for a few seconds. And now the EC-50, the floodiest light in the mix-up. And not as bright as the TM-03. And it has a more neutral tint. I reviewed this one last week. Check it out. Now back to the TM-03. Ooh, ah, uh, much brighter. Sort of. Now the EC-4 GT, much throwier, but not as much lumens and there's not a lot of spill either when compared to the TM-03. It's kind of about the same size though. The TM-03 is much brighter as you can see before moving on to the other tiny monster in the group, the TM-16 GT, which is much brighter than all the other lights here and it's throwier. This light uses four emitters and is freaking huge. You can't mount it to anything. But you could probably, well, never mind. Although the TM-03 is no slouch, it's much more of a compact light. So here it is for another second, and then we go to the Ace Beam T20, a throwier light, about the same as the TM-16 GT in throw, but it's a lot less bright than that light. The Ace Beam T20 is designed for not much spill, but lots of, you know, pinpointing of light. Okay, awkward conversation time. All lights seen in this section I have reviewed 
So browse my channel to find them. The TMO3 has no visible PWM on any of the modes, and by visible I mean my eyes or my camera couldn't detect none. Okay, wrapping it up. The TMO3 is truly a small light for the light it puts out. It's bigger than some tactical lights in its size class, but let's just call it beefier with thicker aluminum. So it's big boned to help dissipate all the heat the LED generates on high. It's kind of hot to hold before it steps down. Not burning, just uncomfortable. Maybe wear gloves. You can actually reset the turbo timer from turbo in case you need a burst of highlight again, although it won't be as bright as the first time because all that light requires a lot of battery juice. Again, this is the brightest single emitter, single cell light I've tested. And until LEDs are made to generate less heat with the same amount of light, all small high output lights are gonna step down like this one. We're kinda at a limit now for heat generation, light output, and the amount that the light will dissipate. The only thing that helps with that heat is more mass on the light, copper, and some sort of cooling method. If you like this light, make sure you buy it at banggood.com who provided this beast of a light for review. Links are in the description for all the things you need for this flashlight. Like my video, leave a comment, and subscribe to my outdoor gear review channel, which mostly does knives and flashlights and headlamps right now. Thanks for watching.